Connacht Edge, a stop start game at Parky Scarlets. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. This one certainly was the classic by any stretch of the imagination. We have early on Mac Douglas gets pinged at the breakdown and Connacht they decide to kick to the corner. They manage to secure the line out, win a penalty, and then Connor Oliver decides to tap and go. And I thought maybe you know they could have been a bit calmer there. They are pounding away at that Scarlet's line, but then they get pinged for a pre-latch and Scarlet's can clear. And there was a lot for Connacht, honestly, where they you know maybe decision making wasn't the best from them and in in those areas, you know, close to the line. So certainly something to work on for them but from here then just murphy twice in at the side of malls and i think he got pinged maybe three or four times for like pretty much the same thing in the mall but this this was like two separate malls he got pinged for here and allows scarlet to go up the line into the 22 kind of surprised really that you know he was certainly candidate for a yellow card but there was you know <laughs> there, there was other candidates as well for both teams. Um, then uh, ping for uh, a crock roll from Henry Thomas on Heffernan, and that's a penalty to Connacht. So they go up the line, they attack off the line out, they go wide. Initially, good defense from Scarlet's kind of forces a kick from Carty, but it's it's a super kick right into the corner. Nicholas wins the race to the ball, but then just passes the ball to no one over his own try line. O'Connor dives on a loose ball to score for Connacht. You know, Scarlett's kind of the, you know, causing their own downfall there, really. Carty adds the extras for seven points to nil. And from here then, Connacht then kick a brilliant 50-22. Tom Rogers gets a yellow card for stopping a quick take. And then we have a team all review for a possible try. Uh, but Josh Murphy was blocking in the line out, so it's chalked off. And there was the initial question that they were going to look at actually was about whether, you know, the um, there was a foot and touch before they scored. So, that, you know, but they didn't even get that far because they could see Murphy um, basically doing the thing. We talk about it all the time for these, you know, um, blue in the face talking about it about the the irish provinces with the line out is this somewhere the the you know jumper goes up the lifter then goes in behind them and uh, causes obstruction when when they form the wall and it's just it's a really stupid one to give away because they do it all the time but you know what can you do next then um Connick strike off the back of a scrum. They move it quickly and then cross kick just finds Hanson unmarked on the far touchline. He dots down to score. Scarlet, I think, were just worried about, you know, the, the threat of the likes of Aki in the midfield and they kind of bunched up their, their defence and had nobody out there for, for Hanson. And, you know, uh, pretty easy um, score, but really well executed kick as well from, from Carty. I thought he had a pretty good game. Conversion makes a 14 points and then it looks like Connacht are completely in control here. But then Bunyaki, he gets a yellow card for a high tackle on Sam Costello. First contact was on the shoulder and then to the head. So it's yellow, I think was fair. You know, as I said, it was um, indirect contact with the head and there was no mitigation. So yeah, yellow card fair. Scarlet's then go up the line from that penalty. They maul it well, and then they go out to the backs and they come over to the left, recycle it quickly. Don't let Connacht defence settle at all. And then Garrett Davis is able to go over to score. You know, some decent carries in there and some line breaks as well. Just Connacht on the back foot the whole time. Costello converts and it's 14 points to seven. Scarlet's then pinged for taking the man in the air to line out and Connacht go up the line into their 22. They're making ground before uh, Codero puts in just a nutting grubber kick, kind of gives Scarlett's possession and allows them to clear. And so Cordero had a very poor game, honestly, for for Connacht, especially, you know, I know he's been out 
you know, for a while. But given the class of the guy, um, you know, really was a poor showing. Then another Connacht attack breaks down. Cordero knocks on. Uh, this time, in fairness to him, it was the pass was was poor. You know, it it pass wasn't even meant for him. It was basically in between two players. Skips across the ground, and then he tries to recover it and knocks it on. But you know, when things aren't going for you. As in his case, they, they, they just don't go for you. Scarlet's then uh, cut Connacht open. And it was just as Aki's yellow card period was coming to an end as well. Johnny Williams offloads out of contact and that puts Eddie James through a gap. He's in behind, draws the cover, and he puts Gareth Davis uh, under the post for his second, converted for 14 points to all. Real, you know, um, Really good response from Scarlet, you know, from going 14-0 down, especially with Connor kind of bossing the game up to that point as well. Then we have more scrappy play from Connacht and Scarlet's, you know, just hack a loose ball through. There's a scramble back and it ends with a penalty to Scarlet's five minutes out. They go to the corner, but for once, their mall set up, you know, fails them and they get turned over. I think they maybe knocked it on as as they're setting up, but a lot of players went to ground as well um, as they're doing that. And it's a pity because the mall was was very good for them, other than in the red zone. Honestly, like the you know kind of out the field, they were making you know good meters with the mall, and Connick really were struggling to handle it. And I think if they had to set that mall up properly there, they probably would have got over the line, but it wasn't to be for them. Connick then win a penalty at the scrum and they're able to clear they then uh, go end to end to score so basically they got the penalty kick up the up the line to you know still inside the 22 they um, go off the top of the line at then and you know bit of intricate play in the 22 Connor Oliver then breaks the line and you know takes it from that 22 to around about halfway he finds Boyle who was running in support and then Boyle carries on and then finds Ben Murphy who just has too much pace for the Scarlet's cover defense and he gets over the score converted for 21 points of 14 and that was a halftime score into the second half then Connacht uh, offside from a kick at the start of the half the first couple of minutes Costello kicks over uh, just about Gets it over actually via the upright. 21 points to 17. Scarlet's then attack off a line out. They go wide and, you know, they look to have found some space, but then Rogers just kind of throws the ball straight into touch, you know, uh, very poor from him. But then Scarlet's do win a penalty at the, um, at the scrum and going better for them in, you know, than in the first half. The, Scrum, you know, both teams, I think, got penalties at the scrum in the second half. But, you know, Scarlet certainly were, had more parity than they did in, in the first half. Then Yon Lloyd slots that penalty and makes it 21 points to 20. I think Costa was off for an HAA at that stage. But then Lloyd stayed on anyway when he when he came back on. I think uh, he went to full back then. Um, then... Man taken in the air to line out and Connacht decide to go up the line into the 22, get another penalty, decide to go to the corner. Then, you know, they set up the mall and they're kind of making some progress, but not really brilliant. And the, all the backs pile in. So now they've got no option to go out the back, you know. Uh, and Scarless, I thought, did really well to halt that. They then, you know, force them to break off and force a knock on and the tackle as well. Really good defense from them. And again, kind of poor decision making, I think, from, from Connacht there as well. Then Scarlet's win a scrum penalty, and that was thanks to substitute Mat- Matthias. He was a big part, you know, had a big impact and a big part in kind of turning around the scrum for them as well. They go up the line, but then the line out is uh, not straight. And then Connacht win, um, Connick then win a penalty at the uh, resulting um, scrum there. And just a very scrappy period of the game. There was a couple more penalties after that as well. Then there's a period of kick tennis. Mac Hansen claims a long kick, decides to run it back. He almost get f- gets free, but he just about gets scragged. And then Scarlett 
pile in and a win the penalty. Costello slots that 23 points to 21. Scarlet's now leading with just over five minutes left. From here then, um, Scarlet's, they're in their own 22, but they're, well, they're kind of on the edge around 22 and it's passed back into 22. So they go up to the go up in the air, but it can't kick it out on the full. Mack Hansen claims it close to the touchline, flicks it back inside to keep it alive. And Scarlet's get pinged at the breakdown because they were going for the, uh, you know, trying to get th that uh, turnover, but what wasn't really on for them. S so then Connacht decide to kick to the post. There's no um, Carty for them. So Cal Ford, he has the chance to put them back in front and then he just splits the post 24 points to 23. Costello then drops a high kick and that looks looks like the game. You know, there's only like uh, a minute and a half left or something. Connacht manage that, get the ball off the field and that is a final score, 24 points to 23. Connacht win. We're going to have a quick look at the stats now before we talk about the two teams. So first of all, on attack, Two tries for Scarlet's, three for Connacht. Connacht got their third try, you know, fairly early in the game, but never really um, had a chance to, to get the, you know, the bonus point other than, you know, going to the corner a couple of times. But, you know, they never progressed it from there. It wasn't like, you know, they were unlucky not to get it, I felt. Um, I thought Scarlet's defended pretty well when they did have those chances. Possession, 45 to 55. So Connick certainly, you know, uh, bossing that. Clean breaks, three for Scarlet's and five for Connick. Um, and, you know, the clean breaks had, you know, had some decent return as well. Often we didn't, you know, we don't see it that much, but certainly, you know, uh, tries for both sides um, on the back of those. Defenders beaten then 14 for Scarlet's and 16 for Connick. So a little bit more even for for Scarlet's on that one and offloads four each as well on to defense then territory 36 percent to 64 so you can see like Connacht you know for that much territory they, they should have been further ahead on on the scoreboard but again you have to give credit to Scarlet's not just for the defense but the fact that they you know they manufactured those scores as well to keep themselves in the game number of tackles 92 for Scarlet's and 80 for Connacht. So even though Connacht had a lot of ball and a lot of territory, there wasn't that much difference between the number of tackles the two teams have had to make. Missed tackles then 15 to 14, and it meant tackle success of 86 to 85. So kind of, you know, roundabout passable, the low end of passable, let's say, um, in, in terms of, you know, the URC as a whole. Turner was one, then five for Scarlet's and three for Connacht. I thought Scarlet's did well, winning some, you know, crucial turnovers to, to, to make sure that Connacht didn't stretch their lead. Uh, kicks retained then, uh, three each. And then again, kicking success. Why is it there? I don't know. Uh, penalties then, 12 penalties each. As I said, it was a scrappy game. It was a very stop, stop start. A lot of that, you know, referee has blown up penalties, but it's not his fault. The players have given them away, you know. And a lot of them were very, very blatant. And certainly could have seen maybe another, you know, there was one player from each side sent to the bin, but could have certainly seen another one from each side sent to the bin as well um, at certain, certain stages in the, in the game, especially the way, you know, Connick struggled with that Scarlet's um, mall kind of in the first half. And it was um, Josh Murphy, number six. He was pinged, I think, about four times for it. And for me, like, definitely should have got a card but then in the second half then Scarlet's kind of had a similar one with um who's their what their number four can't remember the guy's name but he definitely you know if if Murphy had gone to the bin he probably should have gone to the bin as well we'll have a look then at player stats so um two tries for Garrett da Davis brilliant for him you know and then successful carries four for him too and Cottle for Ford sorry Ford for Connacht um then defenders beaten Tom Rogers with four and Connor Oliver with four as well. Um, you know, really good carrying from him. Meters made Tom Rogers with 62, so a decent shift from him. And Mac Hansen with 55. Tom Hansen, you know, he looked dangerous whenever he, he, he got the ball. Um, you know, but he did get scragged for that penalty that almost cost him the game as well. On to defense, then number of tackles, 10 for 
for Plum Three and ten for Oliver. You can see, you know, it, it, even though Connacht were playing most of the game in the Scarlet's half and mostly in possession, still very close on on the tackle count there. And then uh, tame Plum Tree uh, with two turnovers as well. Um, so you know, ten tackles from him and two turnovers. Um, a brilliant shift from him is in defeat as well. So um, let's talk about then the, the teams themselves. So Scarlet's first of all, you know, showing a lot more fight again than they did last year. And it's really good to see from them. Really want to see, you know, these Welsh teams, you know, being more competitive in the league and hopefully being further further up the league table as well than they were for the most part last year. Line out went really, really well. Mall was absolutely excellent real weapon other than again in 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 the red zone where they didn't didn't quite you know um you know make it pay it pay for them they also turned the scrum around in the second half so did well there and then at times you know showed some really good attack as well but just couldn't get themselves over the line in the end and you know that's something that, that they've got to work on is you know it's great being competitive now in games and we definitely want to see them doing that but you, you've got to be winning some some of these tight games as well Connacht then not as fluid as they were in the opening two rounds probably the poorest performance uh, of the season so far could have maybe taken a few more shots at goal as well rather than just continuously going to the corner without reward I'm sure you know um, the, you know early on you can kind of think okay going to the corner makes sense but then when it doesn't work for a couple of times maybe take the you know take the points and then in the second half then i guess you know they were thinking well we've got three three tries already let's try and get the bonus point but it never really happened for them but in fairness they didn't panic when they went behind you know with, with only like three minutes left on the clock or less actually and you know they were able to secure that win probably just about deserved it as well i think on the balance of the game but they'll definitely want to, to improve the performance for next time out mm-hmm.